Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today here we are with the Sabrent uh, USB Type-C or USB Type-A to 2.5 gigabit adapter. And this one, if you don't want to go 10 gigabit like we have right over here and we have seen before on the channel, I'll try to leave a link somewhere right over here or you can just search the channel. So 10 gigabit Thunderbolt 3 to uh, RG45 or Ethernet and then we have a cheaper version. Now the videos that I've been recording today are all related to the network one way or another. One motherboard with 2.5 gigabit which is the Asus Tough 560 uh, plus Wi-Fi and we also have tested the link aggregation in this Nash using exactly this setup. So if you are imagining, hey Robert, why do you have all that if you are just looking at an adapter? In my opinion, and here I don't know how to do things in other way, we need to test out these things. Now, if you want to check out another test, more real life tests using this adapter, just check out the last video where we did use the Sabrent Rocket NVMe 4.0 and the HP EX950 M.2 using as cache. Of course, using mechanical hard drives inside this Nash, Toshiba N314 TB each, the Kinap 10 gigabit switch with eight 2.5 gigabit ports, and the uh, Nash itself with 2.5 gigabit. Uh, so what we have done on the last video was to transfer files and read files from this Nash using the Sabrent 2.5 and also the Sabrent 10 gigabit. Of course, we are bottlenecked with a two connections 2.5 with link aggregation, which means that we can transfer 250 megabytes on reads and on writes at the same time through the tunnels, the tunnels being the two connections at the back. So if you want those results, what I can say is that yes, we will be able to get 250 megabytes per second on reads and on writes on the Sabrent right over here, which is the maximum, it's 2.5 gigabits, so a lot long. Well, it's not usual, but it doesn't matter. So let's go the, starting with the speed test right over here on the 2.5 gigabit connectivity. So just one machine at this moment connected to the uh, Asus Store Locker Store. And what we can see is that we are using the full bandwidth. So 250 megabytes, more or less, on writes and on reads, which is the maximum of the connection. This is it. We cannot get more than this on a 2.5 gigabit connection. And it works really well. I haven't tested out on any computer with USB type A, but with USB type C, it's working just fine. I imagine that it will work the same. So these are the, or this is the data that I've got. We can get full bandwidth out of this one. Now the 10 gigabit, we were uh, getting a maximum of 730 megabytes, which is roughly 7.5 three gigabit connectivity. I'm not really sure where the bottleneck was in the NAS or in the cables or here, but I do believe that it's somewhere right over there and we got really nice results. So I'm really happy. Now today what we are going to do is just a synthetic benchmark. It's not a real uh, world test like we did on the last video. And once again, if you want to check that out as well, you can do. We will be using iPerf on these two computers. So I'm going to rule all this out and we are just going to use iPerf. Have in mind that I do respect iPerf, it is a standard on the industry, but sometimes uh, doing a real life test, transferring files, and then using iPerf, it will not give me the same results. And this is something that it's worth what it's worth. I will share with you the results and we will see after that. Now, what we have at this moment, I've got my MacBook Pro, uh, configured as a server of iperf and I've got a client right over here on my Mac Mini. Okay, and I'm just checking if I was recording the screens because if I don't, then I don't have anything to show you. So what I'm going to do is just a simple command right over here. For those of you that use iperf, you know better than me. If for those of you that don't, you can read and you'll find a lot of info. Just a simple command with the IP address of this machine. So we are going to send that command and we can see on both screens the server and the client that we are getting 2.34 gigabits per second 2.35 so a average of 2.34 
gigabit per second, which means that this is the maximum that we will get. Nonetheless, this means 234 megabytes per second. And the truth is that we have tested real life situations, transferring files from this computer to the NASH, from this computer to the NASH with this adapter, and we would reach 250, 260 megabytes per second, both on reads and on writes. So here we have a result of 2.32. 2.35 which is not exactly on par with the truth now what we are going to do is i'm going to swap this one as a server and change so this will be a client and this will be a server so that we can see a small difference and here we are so now i've got a client right over here and a server right over here let's just expand this a little bit and if i do the same test let's press enter and it's reading on both screens so when i mean a, a small difference as you can see it, it, i was being a little bit sarcastic because it will give me only 1.35 gigabits per second and the truth is that if i only had iperf to test out and if i only had one device to test out i would be in doubt but the truth is that it doesn't i can do it again and just press it right over here and we can do another test but the result will be more or less the same but what my point is is simple after testing out with uh, transfer files from uh, windows and mac os to a nash unit that has a 2.5 gigabit connectivity we can reach that maximum and if i transfer files from one computer to another one the same so we will reach 250 megabytes per second on reads on on writes which means that we have full bandwidth on both sides and then I perf the sides to give me, I don't know, based on what, 1.5 gigabits and sometimes lower. Here in this particular case, got me 1.37 gigabit per second, which we know using real world testing that it's not true. So guys, basically this is it. I just wanted to share with you multiple results. I'm really happy with this. So this is a cheaper solution for those of you that wants to upgrade from a one gigabit connectivity which is which has a maximum uh, transfer speed of 100 megabytes per second reads and writes and right over here we will reach um, 2.5 more or 250 megabytes per second on reads and on writes which is quite decent now i do believe that it's not enough to edit videos especially when we are using large files and i still suggest that we edit videos uh, on, for example, the Saban Rocket NVMe. If you have a Windows computer, you can just plug in one of these internal SSDs or you can put it on external uh, units or you can use, as we have seen here on the channel, this one, for example, from Sabrent, uh, or you can use the fastest one that we have right over here. Uh, I use both of them, but of course, to edit videos, one as Windows, the other one as Mac OS inside. We have talked about how to expand the storage of one of these units because the storage compared, I can get, uh, I did the math back then, I can get roughly eight terabytes for the same amount of money that I could get one terabyte or something like that, or two, not, not really sure. And this one right over here, which is plugged in as eight terabytes and I've got all the data. So the way that I edit is on the SSD and then offload to the NASH unit once I don't need the files anymore at this moment. But having a great connectivity such as this one will take me less than half the time that I would have with a gigabit connection. So this is the advantage at a lower cost than the 10 gigabit. We have full bandwidth right over here. Now, I don't know if I mentioned on this video or not, but we have tested the 10 gigabit and this one, the maximum that we could get on real world testing, transferring files was 730 megabytes per second. Now we can edit videos on with that speed. Uh, the maximum is one gigabyte uh, per second, but we could not reach yet. So we will keep on testing with different devices. The maximum at this moment is 730 using a Kinap Nash with a 10 gigabit connectivity. So that was really awesome. Once again, real world results. And that is it. Hope that this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated right over here. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.